Right, let's take a look at this identity. Secant of theta times sine of theta equals tangent of theta. So with identities we always want to make sure we work with the more complicated side. About 99% of the time you only will have to work with one side of the equation. You do nothing to the other side. All right, and the side that's simpler kind of gives us a goal, tells us what we're going towards. So, I mean, there's a thousand different things that I could do, but if I'm multiplying or dividing and it's just two terms, what you might want to try doing is changing everything to sine and cosine. So, secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So, secant of theta equals 1 over cosine theta. Alright, and then now I have 1 over cosine theta times sine theta, so that's sine theta over cosine theta. And that is a quotient identity. Sine of theta divided by cosine of theta is equal to tangent of theta. So tangent of theta equals tangent of theta. That establishes the identity. So we're done. Let's look at another example. Let's say that I had 1 plus cotangent squared of negative theta equals cosecant squared of theta. If you ever have a negative angle measure, uh, that's that's a hint that you need to apply the even odd formula there. Um, and so you need to keep in mind though this thing right here is squared. So I'm going to apply the even odd formula, but this this term is also squared. The squared means what is that? It means that I'm taking this right here, the cotangent of negative theta, and I'm squaring it. It's just with trig functions we can write our power here in the middle of the problem or of the function. All right, the even odd formula for cotangent says that the cotangent of negative theta is equal to negative cotangent of theta. And so now I have negative cotangent of theta squared. So negative cotangent theta times negative cotangent theta. So it's going to be positive cotangent squared theta. 1 plus cotangent squared theta is a Pythagorean identity, right? Uh, your Pythagorean identity 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. That's what, where we would apply this now. 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. That's the Pythagorean identity. And so I have 1 plus cotangent squared theta, so I can plug in cosecant squared theta. So I have cosecant squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. I'm done. Let's look at another example. Let's say that I had sine of theta times cosecant of theta minus cosine squared of theta equals sine squared of theta. So I see sine squared and I see cosine squared. So that may be a hint that somehow I can use a Pythagorean identity. It doesn't mean that I have to. It means that there's a possibility. I also see a product. So let's first look at the product. Sine of theta times cosecant of theta. These two trig functions are reciprocals. What happens when you multiply something times its reciprocal? You always get one. Even if it's you know, two-thirds times three-halves. Those are reciprocals. You get one. So when you multiply secant of theta times cosecant of theta, I mean sine of theta times cosecant of theta, you can think about it like this if it helps you. Cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta. And so if I think about it like this, then I'd have sine of theta divided by sine of theta. So you get 1. So either know that multiplying reciprocals give you 1, or reply, uh, apply the reciprocal identity, and then you'd have sine of theta times 1 over sine of theta, which is 1. So I have 1 minus cosine squared of theta all right, recall the Pythagorean identity. The Pythagorean identity said that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That's the main form of the Pythagorean identity. And I see a 1 minus cosine squared theta. I can get that if I'll move this cosine squared theta over. Sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. See, so I have 1 minus cosine squared theta here, so I can plug in a sine squared theta. So sine squared theta equals sine squared theta. I've established the identity. 
All right, let's look at one more real quick. How about this one? Cosecant theta plus cotangent theta times cosecant theta minus cotangent theta equals 1. All right, so I have something in parentheses times something in parentheses equals 1. Let's fold that out and see what we get, and then see if somehow that would simplify. All right, so I'm going to multiply the first terms. Cosecant theta times cosecant theta is cosecant squared theta. Multiply the last terms. Cosecant theta times negative cotangent theta is going to be negative cosecant theta cotangent theta. Multiply the inner terms. That's going to give me a positive cosecant theta cotangent theta. And then multiply the last terms. That's going to give me a negative cotangent squared theta. All right. The middle terms cancel out, right? So those cancel out. And that leaves me with cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta equals 1. Now, I do have a Pythagorean identity that has cosecant squared and cotangent squared within it. That identity is 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. And so this is already solved for cosecant squared theta. So what I'm going to do, where I have a cosecant squared theta, I'm going to take and I'm going to plug in 1 plus cotangent squared theta. So 1 plus cotangent squared theta. I'm going to copy down the rest of the problem. Minus cotangent squared theta equals 1. Now you see my cotangent squared thetas cancel out. They're like terms with opposite signs. So I have 1 equals 1. That establishes the identity.